Well, I'm glad you're here because on my fourth video here for the central limit theorem, we're going to put everything from the previous unit and this unit into play with the technology. We are going to take a look at z-scores and using the central limit theorem, and we are going to use our calculator to its fullest potential without the need of having to go to the z-chart. So you can put your z-charts away, but make sure to have your graphing calculator, because here we go with two problems. I'd like you to try to pause the video, do as much of this as you can, and then unpause the video and you know see if you get the answers right. Um, so let's do parts A and B. So the mean number of minutes for app engagement by a tablet user is about 8.2 minutes. Suppose the standard deviation is one minute. Take a sample of 60. So this is gonna be n is equal to 60. This is our sample size. So this means we're gonna be using the central limit theorem. This is the average, so this is our mu here. And our standard deviation is one minute. So standard deviation is one. So now it says, what is the mean and the standard deviation for the sample mean number? Now this is a subtle distinction because the mean is 8.2, but the mean of our sample is also 8.2. So the mean is the same as the mean of the sample, which is 8.2. And the logic behind this is if you pick 60 people from a normal distribution, we're going to assume normality, and then your small sample will actually still have the same um, average but your standard deviation is going to be a lot smaller because based on the sample size, this is going to change that standard deviation. So let us now look at our standard deviation for the sample mean number. Um, so this means that we need to take our standard deviation and divide it by the square root of the sample size, n, which is the standard error of the mean and this brings us to the one divided by the square root of the sample size, which is 60, which is approximately 0.13 or 13 hundredths. So now we have our mean and our standard deviation. So we should be able to find the 90th percentile for the sample mean time of app engagement for a tablet user in a group of 60. So since we are trying to find the percentile, this would be the invert norm, because we're gonna, instead of going from a Z to get a percentage, we have a percentage, now we want the score. So this is going to mean we type in our 0.90. You could also type in 0.9, but I was being a little stylistic there. Our average is 8.2 from our sample, and our standard deviation is one over the square root of 60. I'm not even gonna try to approximate that, I'm just going to use that value by itself. So with our calculator here, I'm going to go second vars, and then I'm going to go to this option, the invert norm. And then my area, I'm gonna want 90% below, um, or the score that would give me 90% below. I'm gonna go 8.2 for my average. My standard deviation is now one divided by the square root of 60. I'm gonna close that parenthesis off for good programming. I hit paste, and then I hit enter, and I get an answer of 8.36, so that's about 8.4 minutes. So I'll go back and write this in here. 8.36 is approximately 8.4 minutes. Now let me reveal part C. Let you take a look at that. You can pause the video right here if you want to try to do it first. Okay, now we want to find the probability that the sample mean is between eight minutes and eight and a half minutes. All right, so here we go with our work here. The probability of the X bar being between eight and 8.5 minutes. So that's what we're looking for. We wanna see what is the probability of being between eight and eight and a half minutes. And this X belongs to, or this X bar belongs to the normal distribution with an average of 8.2 minutes of engagement time and a standard deviation of one over the square root of 60. Now the reason why I set up this important information is because then I can just kind of plug this into the normal CDF 
function of our graphing calculator, which gives me on the low end side, eight is our lower bound, 8.5 is our higher bound, so we're looking between these two numbers, and our average is 8.2, and our standard deviation, again, is one divided by the square root of 60. And so I'll type this in and get the answer here to see what our percent chance is that someone's gonna spend between eight and a half minute, eight to eight and a half minutes in this group of 60 people for this app. All right, so now I'm gonna go second vars. I'm gonna go down to normal continuous distribution function or the normal CDF. Let's see, my low bound is eight, my upper bound is 8.5, and my average is 8.2 two, not five, there we go. And my standard deviation is one divided by the square root of 60. Now I'm thinking this is gonna be a very high likelihood because my lower and upper bound actually encases and has the average in it. So yeah, it's very high, 92.9%. So as a decimal, 0.929, and as a percentage, 92.9. So. 0.929 or 92.9 percent chance that the group, our 60 person group, has an average between 8.0 and 8.5. So that seems pretty likely. I mean again I did choose a, a span that included the average. All right, let's try some older problems with our newfound calculator knowledge. So what we have here is um, back in 2012, I got this information off the web um, of costofwedding.com. It says, on average, US couples spend $26,542 for their wedding with a standard deviation of $6,636. So why don't you try pausing the video on this and try doing these three problems by yourself to see how you do. And also try to use your graphing calculator instead of using the Z-chart for these problems. Each of these is very possible. Okay, so now hopefully you have are done with the problem. So what we want is we want to find a probability that a random person, this is going to be x, this is not going to be x bar, we're not going to use the central limit theorem, we're just going to use our raw average and standard deviation. Now this is spending fewer than $15,000, so my probabilities were x is less than $15,000. From the previous video, um, people did get a little bit confused about how to type this into the calculator, so I'm gonna re-explain that. Now this is going to be for a normal distribution of $26,542 for the average wedding with $6,636 as our standard deviation. Now, what we need for our normal CDF fits this format of low, high, average, and then standard deviation, possibly modifications necessary. So it's really interesting to figure out like, okay, so if I wanna be below $15,000, what's really my low number? And if you look at it on a number line, if we have to go under $15,000, and since this is a discrete function, we can actually have exactly $15,000. So if we have to go under $15,000, how low can you go? 4,000, 3,000, 2,000? And if you make money off of your wedding, um, let's say it's a destination wedding and you're making people pitch in, which is part of the, um, the, uh, the, the part of the, the wedding gift, um, you now just start to have negative numbers and you could actually go to negative infinity. Well, then the number you would plug into normal CDF would be negative 10 to the, whoop, 10, not the comma, don't put the comma in yet, negative 10 raised to the 99th power. By doing that, you ensure that the calculator thinks it's going to negative infinity. In fact, what you're doing is you're loading the calculator up with one of the lowest numbers it can think of. Um, anything close to that would be fine in terms of um, the problem itself, but this is a quick way to do it. And then the high number here would be your $15,000. So again, the normal CDF starts off with the low number and the high number, and the low number here is negative infinity. 
and then the high number here would be $15,000. Then after that, you can put in your 6,636, and then after that, your, whoops, I'm sorry, not that, your, <laughs> after your high number goes the average, and the average is going to be, I'm gonna write down here, $26,542, comma, then your standard deviation, $6,636. Okay, so let's now bring our calculator up and type all of this in right next to the equation itself. If I'm gonna clear this out here, which I will, I'm gonna go second, um, let's go to VARS, let's go to normal CDF, which was really easy with low and high, but our lower number here is gonna be negative 10. Carat key above the division, raised to the 99th power. This again goes to negative infinity because that's my lowest number here. Um, and then the upper number is going to be $15,000. And then my average is $26,542. And my uh, standard deviation, which only accounts for one person, so that's $6,636 divided by the square root of one, which is one. So my X value is going to be roughly only 4.1%. There's a very small chance that someone is going to spend less than $15,000 on their wedding even though you know from the from the averages that were given here. So, we're going to write down that answer of 0 .041 0 .041 and I'm going to write three holes like this, like a bowling ball holes, which means therefore four uh there is, let me just write I want to write it that way. Let's go therefore there is a 4.1% chance that X, which is the one random person, will be less than $15,000. Okay, next we're gonna find a sample of 30 people. Okay, so now N is equal to 30. We'll spend more than $25,000. So here my probability of X bar is greater than 25,000. Okay, and that belongs to N, and that is going to be our $26,542 average, which is the same average as our, um, as our mu x. And then what we have now is our standard deviation is going to be slightly different because thanks to the central limit theorem, we can now divide by the sample size, 30, and this will give us what we need. So here we have another normal CDF equation again. And we're going to see how we fill this in. And if this is on a number line, and it starts here at $25,000, and since this is discrete, we can actually have $25,000. And you can actually spend an, an, an infinite amount of money at your wedding. It will definitely feel that way. But you can spend an infinite amount of money at your wedding, and therefore what we need is we need to go from our 25,000, which is our low bound, to infinity. Now we can't actually type in infinity on the calculator, but we can do 10 to the 99th power. Notice there's no negative in front of it because we want to get a big number with 99 zeros at the end of it. And that will be pretty impressive, right? So then what we have is our, our average of $26,542. And then for our standard deviation, we're gonna have 6,636 divided by the square root of 30. And that is gonna fill up our normal CDF function. So let's get our normal CDF calculator function back up here and we'll go, and I'll move this a little bit more, move this a little bit more, oh, just kind of blew that up a little bit. There we go. So let's go with second VARS and let's go down to normal CDF. And now our lower is 25,000, okay? Our upper bound is gonna be 10 raised to the 99th power our average is going to be, again, 26,542, so I don't need to change that. My standard deviation is gonna be divided by the square root of 30, and we can let the calculator do all that work. We don't need to actually do it ourselves and then get rounding errors by you know, approximating the answer of dividing by an irrational number. So here we go, hit paste, and check it out. 89.8, or .898 is our answer, and since .898 is our answer, Point eight ninety eight. we can say, therefore, there is an 89.8% chance 
x bar will be greater than $25,000. All right, so that's, that's good. That's good. That tells us, and it kind of makes sense since we actually included um, a number here, 25,000. If we went greater than 25,000, our mu would actually be here somewhere inside of our um, acceptable uh, range that we're looking at. And so this was very likely, whereas here, the mu is outside of our range, which makes this extremely unlikely that we're gonna have a bunch of cheapos trying to get um, married for less than 15 grand, where yeah, sky's the limit, people will spend the money. But then let's get to, honestly, the easiest problem here on this uh, page. And the reason why it's easy is because we don't even have to deal with infinity. This is, um, this is going to be the probability that X is gonna be between it's going to be between 20,000 and 30,000, like that. You could have the less than or equal to symbols there. It's not going to change the problem, just more from a, um, a talking point point of view. Because you can actually, since these are discrete, you can actually spend these amounts. So plop them in if you want to. And then we're going to go with our average of $26,542 and our standard deviation of 6,636. Put the six there how evil all right so we go and divide by square root of 30. okay so our normal cdf equation is not going to need any kind of like super analysis because here we have our low number okay and here we have our high number we're not actually going to infinity and then we have our standard deviation which is six thousand whoops gosh twenty six thousand let's try again twenty six thousand five hundred forty two and then we have our standard deviation of $6,636 adjust, adjusted for the sample size of 30. So to finish this video here, let's go and get my calculator. I'm gonna go second, um, oops, excuse me. I'm gonna go second VARS and then go to normal CDF. All right, looks like my lower limit is 20,000, not 25,000. My upper limit is no longer infinity, so I'll type in 30,000. There's my average. There's my standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, which is my standard error of the mean, thanks to the central limit theorem. And I hit paste, and I hit enter, and wow, this is really good. The chances are that I am going to definitely be in this zone, 0 0.998, 0 0.998. That is my number here. 0.998 and 0.998 is therefore their crud there is some terrible handwriting here all right let's try this therefore there again therefore there is a 99.8 percent chance that oh did you find my mistake here look at that that x doesn't have a bar over it because we're talking about a group of 30 people that 20 that x bar is between 20,000 and 30,000 yeah i gotta have that bar there because i'm not talking about one person so yeah it's a really good chance and if you actually looked at 20,000 and 30,000 on a number line so imagine this is 30k and this is 20k the reason why the chance of of you picking 30 people who would have an average between 20 and 30 grand is because our mean from the actual problem is dabs like almost in the middle here. It's a little bit to the right because I didn't draw it to scale, but yeah, I mean if you're looking for if you're if you're looking for a range of values that includes the average, you're gonna have a very high probability that it's in there. It's just that when you look for, as we did in part A, if you look for a problem that wasn't including the average, well, your odds are getting a lot worse. Well, thank you for watching this. I hope you got the problems right. We have two more videos to go in this series, and just the more you do, the better your homework's gonna be. So more homework problems coming at you in parts five and six.